Okay, in today's video, we are going to do a Coulomb's law problem that involves three charges arranged in this triangular form. You can see we have three charges. They are all negative. Q1 is minus 3.5 nanocoulombs. Q2 is minus 3.5 nanocoulombs. Q3 is minus 5 nanocoulombs. Okay? Now, and they are separated each by this distance of 0 0.6 meters. Now, we want to figure out what is the net force, the direction, and the magnitude of the net force on Q3 from Q1 and Q2. Now, this problem might look a little complicated because we have these angles, we have these distances, we have these different charges, and they're not on a straight line, okay? But there are some important things that if you remember, it will make this problem much easier to approach and to solve. One of the things that you should notice is that Q1 and Q2 are both minus 3.5 nanocoulombs. You should notice that the distance between Q3 and Q1 and Q3 and Q2 is the same. 0 0.6 meters, and that means that these angles are the same and that these distances are the same. And that is going to make this problem much easier for us. It's going to cut the amount of work we have to do basically in half, at least. Okay, now I said we want to figure out the net force, the direction, and the magnitude of the net force on Q3 from the other two charges. Now, to get the magnitude of the charge of the force, we're going to use Coulomb's law. But to get the direction of the force on 3 from 1 and the direction of the force on 3 from 2, we're just going to consider the types of charges that we have. For example, you will notice Q3 is a negative charge. Q1 is a negative charge. That means they are going to repel, and that means that the force on 3 from 1 is going to come right straight down this line and go like that in that direction. That is the force on 3 from 1. Well, you should also notice that Q3 is still negative and that Q2 is also negative and they're going to repel each other and that you should notice that the force on 3 from 2 is going to be in this direction. Okay, now we mentioned earlier that these two charges are the same, that these two distances are the same. That means that the magnitude of these two forces are going to be the same. So I tried to draw them so that they look like they're the same. The direction is in this direction, this one is in this direction, and the magnitude is going to be the same. And we're going to use Coulomb's law. The electric force is equal to K times the charge of one of the charges times the charge of the other charge divided by the distance between them. This is the equation we use to figure out the magnitude, and the magnitude of each of the forces is going to be the same. So we're going to get the, we're going to get the magnitudes, we know the directions, and then we're going to add them all up and come up with the answer. So what is the magnitude of the force on 3 from 1? We'll do 3, 1. The magnitude of the force on 3, 1 is equal to, using Coulomb's law, k, which is 9 times 10 to the 9th, Newton meter squared Coulomb squared times one of those two charges. So we'll do 5 times 10 to the minus 9th, 5 nanocoulombs times 3.5 times 10 to the minus 9th nanocoulombs divided by the distance between them squared. Now I want to point out a couple things for this. When we use Coulomb's law, we use Coulomb's law to determine the magnitude of the force. We use the fact that this is a negative and this is a negative, and they're going to repel each other to determine the direction. Coulomb's law we only use for the magnitude. Therefore, we don't put the negative signs in. Okay, We don't use the negative signs to get the direction or something like that. We just leave the, mag the, mag uh, the negative signs off. We put in just the magnitude of the charge. Also, we had to convert. This is 5 nanocoulombs. We had to convert that to coulombs. 5 times 10 to the minus 9th is equal to 5 nanocoulombs. 
the constant is in coulombs, so therefore our charges must be in coulombs. Our, dist our constant is in meters, therefore the distance must be in meters. You need to remember to square the meters. We have coulombs and coulombs, that's going to give us coulomb squared, that's going to cancel with this coulomb squared. We got meters squared, we got meters squared, that's going to cancel, and we're going to be left with newtons. So if we do the math, K times Q3 times Q1 divided by the square of the distance between them, you will get that the force on 3 from 1 is 4.38 times 10 to the minus 7 newtons. And we said earlier, because the charges are the same and the distances are the same, that F32, the force on 3 from charge 2, is going to also be 4.38 times 10 to the minus 7 newtons. Okay? So now we know the directions. Now we know the magnitudes of the forces on Q3 from 1 and from 2. And now we can add them up. And this is how we do that. Here we have Q3. Q1 was up here. Here's the direction of that force. Q2 was down here. Here's the direction of that force. And this is the magnitude. F31 was 4.38 times 10 to the minus 7 newtons. And 3, 2 is the same, the force on 3 from 2. Now, the, both of these forces are not on either the x or the y axis. So in order to add them up, we have to add up their components, their x and y components. So you can see that that arrow, this pink arrow represents the x component of F3, 2. And this yellow arrow represents the y component of F3, 2. And we can do the same thing for 3, 1, x component, y component. Now we're going to call the x components f 32 x and f 31 x The y components are f 32 y and f 31 y Now you should notice graphically, and if you think about it, these two forces are the same because these two forces are the same. f 32 and f 31 are the same. So the y components are the same. And also, because F32 and F31 are the same, their X components are the same. Now, when we add all these up, the Y components are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. So when we add them up, they're going to add up to zero. So we can just forget about it. Now, F32X and F31X, they're equal, but they're also in the same direction. So really, and those are the only two charges, forces left, so the total force is going to be equal to F31x plus F32x, or we could just say that the total force is equal to 2 times F31x, the x component of this force, or 2 times the x component of this force. Now, we know the hypotenuse of this right triangle. This is a right triangle. We know the hypotenuse. That is F31, which is 4.38 times 10 to the minus 7 newtons. We know this angle, but we don't know this adjacent side. We can use some trigonometry, the cosine, because the cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Cosine equals adjacent hypo over hypotenuse. So we can solve that for the adjacent side, which is F31x. And that means that F31x is equal to the cosine of the angle times the hypotenuse, which is F31. And that means that F31x, the x component of this force, is equal to the cosine of 37, the cosine of the angle, times the hypotenuse, which has a magnitude of 4.38 times 10 to the minus 7 newtons. Right? We calculated that earlier. When we multiply the cosine of 37 times the magnitude of the total force, we get the x component, and the x component of F31 is equal to 3.5 times 10 to the minus 7 newtons. Now we said the total force is just going to be equal to 2 times F31x. That means the total force on Q3 is just 7 times 10 to the minus 7 newtons. And that means that the based on the force from those two charges, Q1 and Q2, that Q3 is simply going to move straight down this axis 
or straight down the x-axis. It's not going to veer off to one side because the force pulling up and the force pushing down are equal. They're not going to cause it to move off that axis. Equal and opposite. Okay, so it's just going to feel the force from the x component of each of those. Or this really, the x component is the only one that's going to affect the motion. And therefore, we just say that it's 2 times F31x, which the total force is therefore 7 times 10 to the minus 7 newtons. Okay, so that I think started out to be a little complicated. There are, you know, some steps you have to follow and make sure you take care of all the numbers and get rid of your y components and notice all those things. But I think it turns out to be a relatively straightforward problem if you think about it. It's kind of like projectile motion. And there you go. So hopefully you found that helpful. If you found it helpful, you could give me a thumbs up and a nice comment in the comment section below. And we will see you in the next video. Thank you very much.